Hey there, YouTubers. Welcome back. This is Daniel Strong with another Excel VBA is Fun lesson. Today we're going to talk about the checkbox. Uh, specifically in the Developer tab, we're going to talk about checkboxes you can put in your worksheet, not in a user form. We'll get to user forms soon enough, I promise you. Click on Design Mode to get started. We're going to go to the Insert. And I'm like again, I like to use ActiveX controls more than form controls for a lot of reasons. But let's go ahead and do the checkbox. What is a checkbox? Let's put one right about here. And we'll just double click here. Oh, that did not auto size it the way I thought it would. Let's see. There we go. So there's our checkbox. Again, in a normal size sheet, it would look well normal sized. We'll zoom in for our example. Okay, so you see the design mode is still checked. So when I'm clicking around here on our form controls, let's see here. If I want to, I right click and go to properties, and I'll change the caption right here to give it a name. Click here. Okay. Uh, or you could have something else. Let's say, what what is this checkbox going to represent? That's a checkbox is always going to be either true. Or false. It can't have any other value. Uh, so a lot of times, true is one and false is zero, according to Excel. So that may help you. Let's see here. The caption is going to be. Well, what is our objective? We're going to fill this. Um, first of all, we'll fill this cell here B2 with either the word true or false, based on if this is clicked true, or if it's unclicked, which would say false right there. That's our first task. So we'll just say true or false. And we'll have that user click what it is. So let's take design mode off. If I click it, it really doesn't do anything right now. Let's go back into design mode and we'll double click on the control by default. Actually, let's give it a name. Let's give it a name. Let's click here and we'll call it CB for checkbox. Uh, CB T or F. We'll just give it that name and hit enter. Now it has that name, C, B, T, or F. All right, double click. And now we have C, B, T, or F underscore click. So it remembers the name of our form control. So what is our macro going to say? We're going to say, um, oh, we could make this real easy. Let's say range of B2 on the current worksheet here equals well whatever C B T or F. Let's see if that works. Maybe dot value. <clears throat> if you want to be more specific than this worksheet dot C B T or F dot value. Alright, let's see what happens. Take design mode off. Click here. Oh range B2 is taking on the value of this button. Click it again it again true false true false all right now let's have some more fun go back into design mode double click here um, actually I take that back our second objective I thought would be cool is to make the background of this one uh, be all right let's let's make b2 again let's make the background become red or green <coughs> based on what this user clicks and regardless of what the value is right there <clears throat> so to do that, we need to know what the colors are. Let's record a macro. doesn't matter what we call it. Now, let's go here, go to the Home tab. We'll do the color of green. I just want to see what green is. And now we'll record, record the value of red, just for fun. And let's see here. Let's use developer, stop recording. I'm going to hit Alt F11. And, and you notice it created a module right here. It's usually the most bottom most module, and sure enough, here we are. So they said a whole bunch of extra stuff. They're saying anything regarding the selections interior. The dot pattern is this, blah, blah, blah. So what we want to glean from that is selection dot interior dot color equals this. And what was that one? That was uh, green, I guess. And this 255 is easy enough. That's red. I'm putting a little comment to help myself. And let's see. Let's go ahead and say 
I'm just going to copy and paste this whole thing into our macro. So design mode, double click here. Let's say range of B2, that's the cell we're working in, dot back. Let's see, what is it? What features can we do? I think it was, I thought it was background color. Oh no, I'm sorry. Okay, I got it. Um, okay. It's not the background color I'm thinking of uh, user forms. Okay. Range B2 dot. Remember they said interior dot color equals. And I don't remember it's going to give me an error, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, paste some junk down here. I'll erase in a moment. Let's see. In interior dot color, e uh, dot color equals. This was going to be green. 529 blah blah blah. So there's your green. And we'll copy that and paste it right here. And we know that the other color is 255, which is red. Okay, now let's do an if then statement. Forget this value. We're going to say if me.cbtrf.value equals true, then, and let's indent this first one. If it's true, then green. Oops. Otherwise, I say else, okay? Else, make it red. End if. Okay? So, let's delete all this other stuff. Because it's all irrelevant. <coughs> okay, so, if the checkbox's value is true when it's run, and it's run when you click it, then make the interior color to be green. Otherwise, so every time, every other time when you click it, it's going to be red. Let's do that. Take off design mode, see what happens. True, false, true, false, true, false. Anyway, uh, that's pretty much all we're going to do today. And if you wanted, you could put the value on there too. It's kind of like conditional formatting, only you can have a billion conditions in there. Okay, so every time the value is true, then the color is green and uh, range b2 dot value equals bonanza <coughs> and when it's false we'll have the value to be equal to <coughs> batcher milk awesome let's do this uh, okay very nice, it's working. When it's true, it's bonanza. When it's false, it's badger milk. Wow, there's a lot you could do with that, huh? One more time, let's change that to a number. Let's take the quotes out and make it a number. 3,477.98. Ooh. Number, numbers go to the right. Text usually falls on the left. Wow, that's exciting. Thanks for tuning in. We'll go more into depth on combo boxes in our next lesson.